What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Investing Bros with special guest me, Tim. Uh, I've missed the last couple of shows, but as most of you guys know, I am just moved into Atlanta. It is going great. We will probably not get to talk too much about that in this show, but maybe later today during our bro time with our Patreon members or even later tonight, I'll tell you guys more about how life is going here in Atlanta. But we got a lot to talk about here with crypto because Bitcoin is down this morning as we're kind of leading into our FOMC meeting tomorrow. But what does that mean for you guys? and How should you respond? We're going to be talking about that and a whole lot more because despite the fact that Bitcoin's going down, news just keeps piling up that the death of the dollar is closer than many think. What does that mean for all of your crypto assets? We'll talk about that and a whole lot more in this amazing show. Go ahead though and smash that like button. If you guys love the investing bros, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more amazing content. We go live every single weekday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with amazing guests, amazing news, amazing TA, everything you need to get your morning started on your investing journey. I'm joined by my amazing co-hosts. They have been so awesome during this whole transition phase, but I'm starting off with the man who used to sit across the desk from me, Mr. T Shroom. How are you doing this morning, T Shroom? Well, I'm doing better than I deserved him. We'll start with that. Ooh, uh, doing much yeah. better. Uh, doing good. Um, was able to be on ATB last night. Did not get the win by one point. Lost to uh, Ben himself, who is uh, really, really knowledgeable in crypto. So I still consider it a win for uh, just crypto knowledge. But um, I've got a good quote for us this morning because we're going to be talking a lot about banks. So if you'll go over to my screen, the quote for the day is, give a man a gun and he can rob a bank, but give a man a bank and he can rob the world. That is from Tyrell Wellick. So wow. that, is our, that is our quote of the day. Uh, I really like it. There's definitely been um, a, an ongoing and never ending story of people being robbed by banks. Um, or at, at least banks not giving favorable uh, terms to folks who are in need and in poverty. I'm sure if you're listening to the sound of my voice, you can probably relate to this in one way or another. I'd much rather have a gun than a bank, to be honest with you. Interesting. Interesting point of view. Well, speaking of, uh, of that kind of a view, what about you, Piper? What would you rather have, I guess? As we, we transition to show this morning into a gun versus a bank debate. Never thought it would have happened, but only on investing bros. Uh, I'll take uh, I'll take the bank for five hundred, Alex, um, <laughs> because uh, I can buy I can buy a lot more guns uh, with the bank. So um, that's true. Interesting. You know, do I want to like you know buy a, buy guns and rob one bank, or do I want to buy one bank and buy all the guns? I'm just saying. So. Well, you know, it's crazy. I don't know how many people got to watch yesterday's uh, BitBoy show. I was sitting there behind the scenes, just kind of observing, learning. By the way, fun story, in the future, that will be what TJ does. That'll be my job. So that's a little that's a little teaser for you guys. I will be becoming the co-host over there. But they were discussing the fact that there was a rule. There's a, there's a law that said that a, one bank cannot own more than 10% of all of the transactions, all of the exchange. And with, with yesterday's acquisition, when uh, JP Morgan acquired acquired uh, First Republic, they now have more than 10%. So they were talking about on the show over there, watch the banks start to change the rules. Ben actually has been saying this for a while. He, he's been saying he watched them try to get to a three or four bank system where you only have three to four options, just like cell phones. You only have really four or five options. They're going to try to do the same thing with the banks. This whole process is just killing all the smaller banks so that the bigger ones can take over and have more power. Uh, by the way, guys, that's all the more reason why I think you know, I, I used to I used to not like XRP whatsoever. The reason I'm a big fan of XRP is because, as people say, it is a it is a banker's coin, right? It's a banker's coin, but what it does is it allows the smaller banks to compete with the bigger ones. So I am hoping that that lawsuit ends here very soon, and before all these large banks destroy all the smaller ones, we're able to level the playing field. Because as much as we all want crypto to be the future, and it will be the future. We can't. We don't want all the small banks just to disappear overnight. That's something that would be very, 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 very bad for uh, centralized authority in the uh, in around the world and all the global powers. But we'll, we'll, we're digressing. We'll get more to that later. We got a lot to talk about on today's show. But first, let's go ahead and go over here and read some names. 
And I do have today's episode is brought to you by uh, Blue Sticky Notes mm -hmm. and uh, Peach Mango Rowdy Energy. This is not that good. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Don't buy it. Uh, I don't know if it's all of Rowdy products or just the peach mango, but it is absolutely terrible. But speaking of people that are not terrible, that is our audience. And I'm going to be reading some names here today. We got a mellow fellow and Alton Henderson were the first two, but special shout out to a mellow fellow. He was first. That bot seems to be working smoothly. Once again, who else do we have here this morning though? Bobby Smoot, Spee, Bob, which fun fact guys, Bob has two capital B's because his mom wanted to call him Bobby. He didn't like it, so he went with the capital B at the end. So I'm going to continue calling him Bob because I think that's what he prefers. But if you guys want to call him Bobby, I'm sure he'll get a kick out of that. And when I say a kick, he'll probably kick you in the face. Uh, Elliot Locke is also here. Justin Eubanks is here. Who else do we have? Mike Play, Ninja Glock, Crypto Trucker Mike, everyone's favorite non-president, Crypto Ben Franklin is here, Crypto Pew Pew Cruz, uh, who else we have? Mike Lowry, Gia S, a uh, couple more here, Curtis Rorick, J and Carr, Crux of Crypto with the Blue Wrench here, Crypto Trappa saying morning everybody. I think he also said he made a buttload of money on Pepe coin. I'm interested to hear more about that. Uh, Crypto JMP is here. Uh, who else do we have? John Khan. And let's get like three more. Three more names, and then we'll go and get into the show. Grand Rufy Incorporated is here this morning. Elo Brown is here this morning. And the last one, the special last name of the day, Mr. Brian D. Thank you, everybody, for watching. All of you who are watching right now, go ahead and smash that like button because we got way more viewers than we have likes. Also, go ahead and answer that poll that we have in chat. Are you guys buying or selling leading into the FOMC meeting? With that said, though, if I did not read your name, it's not because I don't love you. It's because it's time to move on with our fantastic show. And I'm going to throw it over to Piper to start us off with our little macroeconomic outlook. Of course, the big one is FOMC tomorrow. But what else should people be looking for, Piper? All right, Tim. So uh, this morning we had some info come out on your, on Europe uh, area. This is their inflation rate year over year. Came in at 7%. Uh, up from last month's 6.9%. However, consensus and projection was in that that realm. So the consensus was that 7% uh, forecasted to be neutral, came in a little bit higher. So we did see that happen. Uh, however, I will point out that their core inflation rate came down a little bit. So that's pretty good. Um, we got Jolt's job openings coming in today uh, at, should be right uh, about an hour from now. So yeah, Jolt's job opening is going to be coming in today. But the big one, the one that one everyone is waiting for is tomorrow. And that is going to be the Fed interest decision right here, Fed interest rate. Um, we are consensus and forecast at 5.25. So we are looking at a 25 basis point hike tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. thought that was going to be flipping around possibly, but did not happen like that. So, you know, uh, eat some, uh, eat some crow, some crow here and, uh, eat some, some humble pie and go, yep, yeah, I was wrong. That's what happened there. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's what we're looking for tomorrow. We want to see this data when it comes in. And I think that, um, this has been cooked in for many months now. So I don't think we're going to be see too much out of it uh, as far as shock to the market, but I do think that we will see a little bit of, um, a little bit of volatility coming in just before, which we're already starting to see a little bit there. Uh, and then on Thursday, we're going to have the European central bank interest rate decision. They are looking at a 25 basis point rate hike also. So we'll see how that works out. Let's check Friday. Unemployment rate's going to be coming in on Friday. Uh, consensus is that unemployment has gone up a tenth of a percent. So that's what we have for the week right now. And for everyone out there that is watching and saying 1440, yes, you are correct. I have uh, upped our stream rate a little bit, and we are a little more high def to include. Oh, you just went mute on my end. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, because right, well, I have it muted when I switch it over. Uh, Tim is in beautiful, beautiful 1440 HD. So there you go. Hey, yeah, it looks hey, good. No more pixel, Tim. <laughs> is that does my finger get cut off right there? Look at that. Look at that fun thing. Oh, look, I got a, a good chunk out of my hand right there. I love it. <laughs> anyway, go ahead and share my screen here, Piper. We'll take a look at the FOMC prediction real quick before we jump into the TA for this morning. Uh, it's not sharing. Uh, nope, other screen. I, I don't know how it, it got back. Look, this is what the FOMC is doing right now. Uh, absolutely <laughs> nothing. 
Uh, now let's see here. We got to make sure. Is this not shared? Oh, it. You know what? I don't know why, but it unshared my screen here, Piper. Let's see if this works now. Boom. Look at that. Beautiful as ever. We got right now. Uh, this is where I told you guys before. When we get things right, we will we will say we get things right. When we get things wrong, we'll say this wrong. My hot take from a week and some change ago was that some sort of news was going to come in that would flip the opinions. And to be fair, there was news. The news did try. We have it. We had another bank crash. We had uh, a higher than or lower than expected or no, I guess what was it? Yeah, lower than expected PCE. But that didn't change it. We have a 96.5% chance right now that we're going to get a 25 basis point rate hike. Let's go ahead and check out the next couple of months, though. So even though a lot of people are expecting 25 points tomorrow, I'm going to explain here in just a second why that's actually probably a good thing and a bullish thing. But let's take a look at what they're expecting in June when we get our next one. They are expecting right now a 64.8% prediction that we will have a pause for the first time in over a year and a half of interest rate hikes. We should be pausing in June, July. Let's see if they say we stay paused in July. Yeah, July, it's going to say we're going to stay paused once again. September, it looks like September is continuing to say we're going to hold up at 525. But the, the cuts are starting to pick up momentum here in September. So I'm going to go ahead and say November more than likely they're expecting a 25 point cut. Sure enough, yes. So they're expecting in November this year the first 25-point cut, the official pivot. I don't know. Some people are going to say that pauses are pivots. I don't think that that's necessarily how you should classify it. Um, I think a pivot is when you make your first cut. And at this point, a lot of things can change. And again, we're going to talk more in the news section later uh, about some things that are going to change for the U.S. dollar. But for this point, you know, they're predicting November is when the pivot officially happens. Uh, let's go to December. December, they're going to predict another cut. Uh, and then I'm not going to get into January of 2024 just yet. But that's what we're kind of looking at right now with the FOMC. Let's take a look at the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index sitting at 55 after yesterday shooting all the way up to 63. But of course, now as I transfer over to the charts, you guys understand why it dropped so much after hovering up here at $30,000. We did drop significantly yesterday coming down and on this hourly chart we kind of came back below but let's go look at the four hour chart real quick I, I talked about this yesterday on twitter and if this ends up being wrong listen i'll admit that it was wrong but at this point if you guys are looking on the four hour chart going back to these two wicks we have back here back on april 24th and april 26th while we did have candles and wicks drop below the four hour chart is kind of still respecting this rising level of support right here which would be forming an ascending triangle now to be fair i want everyone to understand this before i continue on with this this would give us a prediction of up towards thirty three thousand dollars. however i do want to see the price get back up here and it, it could break on this third touch but to be fair i'm only going to give this credit to having two different touches and the reason why is because what you want to look at when you're doing these things come on over here i don't want you you're kind of getting in the way there what, what you're kind of looking for here is you're looking for uh at least five good touches so right now we have come on no marker we have this push right here. This is the first touch up here, and we shot down in almost one candle, two candles technically, but almost one candle we shot down. So this is one, two. This third touch, even though we have a touch here and a touch here, that's really confusing. I'm going to delete that. Even though we have these two touches, the fact that we didn't come back down to touch support line would imply, if I actually were to go ahead and do this, let's go ahead and use this indicator right here. One, two, three. This one doesn't count. We come down here four. I want to see us, we could potentially either break through right here, or we could see the price after hitting that five come one more time. Come on, Marker, work with me here. Got a different setup here in Atlanta. And then we see a breakup to the upside up here. So it is not necessarily a sure thing just yet, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. The fact that we have a flat level of support with at this time still setting higher lows over here on the uh uh, gotta hit this sleep button over here on the four hourly chart so keep your eyes fixed on that as we said before i'm still keeping my eyes fixed on the 2019 uh rally that we had it's not identical there are definitely things that are changing the game but just just keep this in mind that this yellow box continues to be a high level of support if i were to scroll back all the way give me just a second everybody we're gonna scroll back all the way to 2019 once again to take a look at what's happening there and then we'll move back into the current time look at this once again this yellow bo box back in 2019 same exact level we didn't get the same type of rally that we had just here a couple of days ago but the fact that we had several touches right here at and right above the yellow box Box, we're seeing something very similar in the play out here. Again, the price action of 2019 leading into where we currently are 
if these timelines were uh, identical, if we were kind of saying we're going to repeat the same, we're still holding fast to that concept of being almost identical movements to 2019. Now, I will want to see what happens with the FOMC meeting because the FOMC meeting, while it would have potentially the power to send us back to the downside, which I'm going to talk about here in a second, I'm wondering if there's going to be some sort of catalyst, either the FOMC meeting or right after that ends up catapulting us up in this upward momentum. Let's go back to current day. Actually, the easiest way to do that, let's go to daily chart and then we'll move over and readjust here. Boom, there we go. Yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering if that happens. But going back to the FOMC meeting, let's talk about this for just a second. You guys saw a couple of green lines. Um, that's the last couple of FOMC meetings. The fact that we are dipping going into this meeting and the fact that we're looking at this CME futures tool back here in May and we're seeing a 96% chance saying 25 basis points. Guys, this is the price kind of baking in that price action. The fact that we, it's almost a certainty that we're going to get 25 basis points and the fact that the price is already dipped and still holding up, that could only lead, in my opinion, to something that potentially will be a reversal in price. And what am I talking about here? If you guys go back over here to the last couple of FOMC meetings, you're going to see that price sometimes does a little bit of a fake out before going into real direction. What I mean is if you go back here to our March uh, FOMC meeting, we actually rallied into the day we had a, a harsh a harsh uh, fall we i think a lot of people were thinking he would potentially pause back in march he did not you guys see that massive red candle and we had a little bit of a pullback before he moved into a somewhat sideways and downward motion afterward this pre meeting rally ended up becoming something that sent us down to the downside. Let's go back to the previous FOMC meeting before that. Almost the same thing. We fell right before the meeting, and then when the meeting actually happened, we moved to the upside, and then the volatility took us kind of sideways to the downside. There's a lot of volatility that happens during these meetings. Same thing over here before the meeting. This is back over here in December of 2022. We actually rallied excuse me, into the meeting and continue just a little bit before falling back down and moving sideways. So my point here is despite the fact that we are falling beforehand, this actually could be a bullish catalyst because it's, when we're looking back at past FOMC meetings, a lot of times when you're falling into a meeting, you end up moving out of the FOMC meeting to the upside and vice versa. When you move up into the meeting, the market ends up moving around. This is, this is because, again, we, we want to make sure you guys understand this. There are manipulators, there are people at play that want to mess with you, the retail investor. They'll do everything they can to freak you out. And so with this price dropping, I am sure, maybe not in this channel, because I think that you guys have been watching us for a while. You guys are aware of this kind of action. But a lot of people are watching the price action fall right now, and they're starting to shift their brain and saying, oh, look at that. It's going to be 25 basis points. The price is falling. Here we go, Bitcoin. We're going to be going down, back down to 25.2. Maybe a new low is coming in. And that's exactly what the whales want you to think, because if they can get all... If they can get the, the millions of retail investors to FUD out and sell their Bitcoin, those whales then can buy it, get a great opportunity to then spike the price up and take profit later. And by the time you as the retail investor seem like you're more interested in buying Bitcoin again, that's time for them to sell and take some profit. With that said, though, again, the fact that we're looking at the more macro news here and saying, hey, this actually could be a more bullish thing, the fact that we're following the meeting, the fact that we're still respecting this ascending triangle. Let's look at some other levels here to keep our eyes on. Let's turn on our smart money concepts. I have not used this in a little bit, but this right here is our multi time frame support and resistance levels. And you guys can see we have our, let's see, I'm going to go to my settings. What are, what are my line colors representing? 12 hours are green, four hours are orange, and daily is our red candles. If we were to drop, we definitely still have some support down here at 27,000. Just so you guys know, that's kind of my level also. If we lose 27,000, I will become a lot less confident that we're going to repeat 2019. Despite the fact that I thought we were going to push through up here, so I, I was wrong about our, my timing of when I thought we were going to make our breakthrough through 30,000, as long as we stay above 27,000, I still think that we have that possibility of repeating our history going back and doing what 2019 ha ha says. So that's another a level to watch. If we lose that level, of course, we're going to see a lot of support levels down here towards 25,000, even down towards 24.6. So keep your eyes on that. But the other thing is you guys can see we we kind of hovered here amongst a, a patch. And so I, I would say the next level, we're kind of tapping on this 30,000. We keep hitting it and coming down and setting higher lows. So if we can get back above the 29,200, start hitting that 30, I think it's only a matter of time after we keep hitting $30,000 that we end up breaking through and like i said if, if this ascending triangle ends up playing out to the upside you take the opening of it this is going to give us a breakout prediction up here of about thirty three thousand dollars 
boom, right there, 33,100. So that's that's kind of our levels. If, if we get a little more bearish, I'm looking at 27,000. If we can't hold 27,000, keep your eyes on 25.2. Of course, there's a lot of things that will change, and my technical analysis will definitely change. My narrative, my, my plan, my strategy for how I'm trading it will all change if that happens. But if we make a move to the upside, I'm not saying we blast through 30,000 on the first move, but I am saying watch as we continue to kind of wear out whoever keeps selling at 30,000. And if we do, it should be a nice little pop-up up to 33 before the market keeps deciding does it want to continue to the upside i know you guys have heard me talk about there's also significance up at 36,000 there's significance at 42,000 and of course the granddaddy of them all for me 50,000 is definitely still in play but let's take a look at some other things here i want to take a look uh at our uh what we're, our price is currently doing another reason to potentially suspect that we have some nice support here let's go back all the way to this past dip here and let's take a look at the free the fixed range volume profile right now you guys will see that we are sitting right on the point of control so this is the place over the last couple of months that has had the most amount of price moved back and forth so this is a sign of kind of indecision it's kind of at a very big decision point but of course that's good for support and the bulls right now unless the bears can make a significant push this is very nice we hold this up our Levels down here at 26,700. 26, of course, that's below 27. That is our, our value area low. So technically speaking, I know I said about 27,000 is the place to freak out. But what our fixed range volume profile is saying is 26,7 is actually our level to watch. For the bulls to gain back control, we want to beat this very uh, – uh, <laughs> Area value high up here at 30,294. Of course, we have not seen that price ever since the 18th of April. So those are our levels I'm looking at right now and saying, hey, if the bulls or bears want to gain full control over what's happening, those are the levels they got to be keeping their eyes on. Last thing I want to look at here before I transition and let Piper take a look at Ethereum, let's pull up our uh, our Fibonacci levels. This is something to keep an eye on, too. I'm going to go back to the bottom we had here just a couple of days ago, up to our more recent high. You guys can see we actually, for a very short on the hourly chart, we held up at that golden pocket, but we ended up falling all the way down using our platinum pocket as support, and right now we're wrestling with our golden pocket. So just another level of a significance here. Hey, we got to see the bulls or the bears make a decision here. Did the golden pocket just become resistance, or can we reconquer it and start using it as support once again? Those are things I'm keeping my eyes on. On here on Bitcoin again, guys. I, I do not be surprised to see us kind of just trade sideways, trade maybe a little to the upside, respecting this ascending red line up into the FOMC meeting. But even if we have that 25 basis points, we've said this before, and I'll say it again. Jerome Powell saying 25 basis points isn't even the most important thing. I'm really interested to see how he responds to the more recent bank failures and how he's responding to all of the, the macroeconomic things happening all over the world that are showing some weaknesses of the dollar. That might be the catalyst that actually pushes Bitcoin and crypto to the upside because that's what it would make the most sense. However, we'll have to wait until tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, actually 2.30 Eastern Standard Time when he goes live to find more of that information information out with that said though piper i would love for you to, to let us know what is happening over on ethereum and what are you seeing are you more bullish are you more bearish what are you predicting happens over the next couple of days well i've got a couple things here that i'm looking at and like i've been, I've been saying since last week as long as we were in this platinum pocket here that I'm still just fine with the, everything that's going on with Ethereum right now. And you can see this pull down that we had rejected right there uh, off of the 887. Down it came. And now we are looking at the 786 right now. So we're still trading inside of this platinum pocket, guys. <clears throat> ain't nothing changed there. Uh, ain't nothing but a thing right there on, on Ethereum's price action. But I do see a couple of weird things here. Uh, one, we kind of have this channel that we've been trading in since back uh let's go 14 march here we did have a little breakout here where it came up it tested the top right there got a breakout and you can see when it came back in we also went right back into the um nope that is the wrong one go back to the channel there you go we came right back into this area here uh trying to fight to get back up you can see it's it's played out well uh this is also where we rejected on the wick up there and now we're back inside of this channel this is a bearish pattern um doesn't mean it has to go that way, but I am starting to see a little bit of slope here on the oscillator ribbon. I am seeing this flattening right here on the MACD. The RSI doesn't look like it's tipping down too hard. It's just a little slight declination on that. I mean, I, nothing's really looking super 
bullish here um or super bearish here or super bullish either one uh what i am seeing though is if i take off this mid fibs and i put on the all-time high fib we're also getting all the support on the 236 so this level right here whether you take it from the previous high to the low or whether you take it from the all-time high to the all to the local low we're we've got massive support at this level right here at 1800 to 1825 so um another thing that i'm seeing is uh guys we've got this value area low right here and if i throw on the market oracle from chart prime i told you guys if we came down out of this platinum pocket range that we were in uh that we were likely going to see support below on the dynamic reactor that's exactly what we wicked down to so if anybody had been watching that on this 12 hour chart that would have been a fantastic spot to short to or to even catch along from uh that's what I'm seeing on that. And then I've got one more thing I want to show you. If we go back and we take this previous dump area here um, that took place before the last um, FOMC back in March, I actually took some uh, bar patterns here and I'm going to turn off everything else so you can just see what we're looking at here. Let me, I'll leave that on. I'll turn that. No, nope, I'll leave that on. I'll turn that off. There we go. Uh, you can see that it is this had a nice drop down and this is literally this this pattern here copied and added onto here it it is uh very eerie how it comes directly to the golden pocket comes back up gives a retest on the 887 and, and then comes back up to grab liquidity from this previous high so uh mm -hmm. some in very interesting fractal going on there when you paste it back into again uh and where it's going to be hitting at and i didn't adjust this at all this is literally just a copy of these added over here so um not too concerned though about eth man uh i i i'm more interested to know what's going to happen with uh xrp because i saw someone in the chat earlier ask about xrp news and something about may 8th and it uh, reminded me of something that I saw this morning when I woke up. I'm going to jump over to my other screen here. Mm. Uh, come on. If you'll jump to my, there we go. Perfect. Uh, I got a well alert this morning. And I don't get well alerts at, that often on XRP, man, at all. Uh, this morning, two hours ago, someone moved almost 25 million XRP from Binance to an unknown wallet. I never see XRP move like this. So it makes me wonder if what they were putting out about news coming out on May 8th, if anybody knows what that news is, uh, let me know because I, I haven't been able to find it yet. But uh, never seen any XRP moves uh, take place on well alerts and getting one this morning uh, and then him saying something about news on May 8th. Uh, makes me wonder if something is going to be coming for XRP, Tim. Yeah, that is that is massive. That's not a small amount of XRP. That's that's a big move. And, uh, you know, we have to wait to see what happens to confirm it. But that's the kind of stuff that happens uh, that people who are a little closer to that lawsuit know some things that the rest of us don't know. And, uh, you know, that could be really bullish, especially especially since the price is down this morning. I mean, XRP is down almost 0.1 percent this morning. Uh, that person moving it knows something we do not know. If the price was massively up, I would say like, hey, but this could be, be a potential move of manipulation. But, uh, you know, we've been waiting here for a long time and we, we kind of are sitting in a place where with the XRP lawsuit, it could end today or tomorrow or a week from now or a month from now. Um, I do not think that that XRP lawsuit is going to be still active in the year 2024. I do expect us to be over sooner rather than later. The question is when. And again, like you said, maybe that's a little sign that some people, some some birdies know a thing or two that we don't know. So we will have to see. As we're about to transition here, though, into our stock market open, I do want to let everyone know you guys need to go ahead and smash that like button. We have 140 people watching this morning, which is amazing. You guys are so awesome. Uh, the problem is there's only 67 likes. So that means there's a whole buttload of you guys that have not smashed that like button just yet. You need to go ahead and do it right now. I do need to let you guys know. So for the rest of this week, I'll be leaving the show a little bit early because I'm still doing some training things here at the Hit Network. If you guys want to hear more, make sure you guys are in our Patreon and our Discord because I'm going to be giving you guys more information there. That's where you guys get a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I'll, I'll probably fill in people a little bit here on the YouTube channel. But with that said, as I throw it to T-Shroom, I'm going to have to be leaving for today, but I'll be back here tomorrow morning, same time. Like this this week, I'll be here from about 9 to 9.30. And uh, then starting off next week, I should be good to be back here full time. But love you guys. T-Shroom, go ahead and take it away, and I'll see the rest of you guys tomorrow. Bye, Tim. <laughs> Bye, Tim.
Hope you have some uh, good training there, guys. Well, uh, we are going to go ahead and do a hard pivot into the market open here, guys. We are one minute into the New York session. Going ahead and starting off with energy, as we like to do here on the Investing Bros. Um, we are looking at energy down, down lower again. So U.S. oil getting slashed th this morning, down 2%, and natural gas uh, futures contracts down 3%, and uh, the ETF there, UNG, down 2.8%. So uh, energy is becoming uh, cheaper, and that is generally good for the economy. Let's go ahead and do a quick snapshot of oil uh, and just kind of see where it is relative to some of the levels we've been watching. It's getting back down to that equilibrium price there. Um, so energy is now on sale for the U.S. economy. That is generally a good thing for companies, especially heavy into transportation and also good for uh, revenue, good for, uh, I'm sorry, not for revenue, but good for profits, good for earnings, and great for anti-inflationary forces. Moving on into our indexes, we're seeing red across the screen here. This is where I'm looking. The Dow Jones is down 0.4 and the S&P is down 0.3 and the NASDAQ just ticked green. Cannot decide if it wants to be green or red here in the second minute of the New York session. That to me is signaling that folks are going rotating out of risk, uh, rotating out of security and into risk. Um, but I would say that is an extremely slight interpretation and is uh, generally subject to change throughout the rest of the day of trading. Um, but folks are, are less shy at buying the NASDAQ this morning than they are the Dow and the S&P. So that does signal that it might be slightly more risk on today as we run up into that FOMC meeting tomorrow. Got some mixed results here on the crypto charts, but it is generally red across the screen. Seeing a couple green names, AGIX, Litecoin up 1.6, Optimism up 1.3. Um, but your biggies here are really unmoved, actually. Bitcoin pretty much unmoved and Ethereum up moved, uh, unmoved on the session on the day. So that is going to be your crypto analysis there. I want to take a look here at Cake. Cake continues to get slaughtered down another 1.2% this morning to $2.50 on Cake has experienced a uh, disproportionate move to the downside and is now firmly in that discount range on the four hour for Cake. So it has had some issues. Uh, we've covered those issues. Essentially, the uh, some of the leadership over at Cake has said, you know, you've enjoyed those high uh, APYs. Yeah, they're gone. So that has caused an exodus out of Cake but we shall see what it holds for the long term. Gold getting bought this morning up 0.3. Silver had a very strange day yesterday, opening up almost 4% and then wicking all the way back down. We'll take a look at that here. But it is now trading lower 1.5% down this morning. And it is, look at this strange trading pattern, guys. It's got now on the four hour down below the dynamic range. Um, so the dynamic indicator there. So it's very, very interesting I don't know what is going on here, but silver is selling off. Uh, folks may be rotating. I mean, the easiest way to interpret this is that it was it was trading in a pretty healthy range here uh, between the the lower uh, band of the trading channel. Underneath that, that was its resistance, and then it was finding support here on this green line, and it was just kind of trolla lying around. Um, there were some economic events that kind of changed the situation. Um, we got the CPI print, and I think that is what has inspired a giant spike in silver. And then the exit liquidity obviously was the kind of the name of the game there because now silver is moving to the downside. A lot of sellers here in silver, and at the same time, gold is getting bought 0.2%. So um, I'm hearing a lot of analysts saying gold is kind of the move here for Q2. It's a good, it's going to be a good um, asset to hold in Q2. We'll see. We'll see. So far, as we know, Bitcoin is the best performing asset in all of the assets uh, that Bank of America holds, at least. So that's what they reported a couple weeks ago. Moving on into our mega cap tech stocks here, guys. It is green across the screen, except for Google. Google down 0.1%. And your biggest leader is Tesla there. Tesla, I saw a chart yesterday kind of showing that it could be getting into a nice buy zone. You missed it back here on April 27th when it was in the discount range on the four hour. Uh, let's go ahead and flip over to the daily charts because the four hour sometimes can give us a little bit of a bias towards the degen mindset. Uh, not too much though. Uh, yeah. And so on the daily chart, you're seeing Tesla in much more of the equilibrium range. So I would say, I would say probably wait for a dump lower, but this could be a name that you may want to trade uh, to the upside. Whoa, 
There we go. Thank you, Trading View. Uh, we'll keep moving here, guys. Uh, bond yields are down. Two years still up above four. Ten year, uh, ten year is at three point five. So you're still getting a nice little inversion on that yield curve. Not a good thing for the economy. I said nice, but um, Dixie making a making some movements to the back to the upside here. Back up to 102.33 on the daily chart there. You're seeing it's bounced off that discount range and is trying to make a move lower. It has gotten up above these highs that we put in back in uh, April 17th, but it has definitely yet to uh, come up here and challenge this line of resistance that was put in on April 10th, uh, much less this bottom level of the trading channels there. So uh, moving right along, cannabis selling off pretty heavy in your mid in your mid cap tech stocks selling off uh, pretty uniformly there, except for Workhorse up 1%. Your big banks all had uh, kind of looking like they're experiencing a nice little hangover today. Um, FRC here is frozen, so you can disregard. I'm going to take that off my watch list because it is no longer a thing. It is now uh, has now been absorbed into JP Morgan. We'll cover some of the details of that in our story section. Uh, but JP Morgan, the only name here getting bought in our big bank watch list. And oil is down obviously because oil um yeah oil is selling off there so our oil producers are suffering a little bit uh all right well piper that's going to be our open our market open here let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we've got going on at the channel before we get into our uh stories so yesterday we posted our weekly newsletter um everybody in the discord got a chance to go go see um my take on consensus 2023 kind of what i've been thinking um, and what were some of my takeaways? Um, and then we got uh, our nice little uh, market outlook, kind of what's going to be expected this week. Of course, we talk a lot about that kind of stuff on the channel, on the stream. Um, but in the newsletter, you know, it's a lot more uh, concise and you can actually read it if that's something that you like to do. You can also send it to people who read and who maybe are not inclined to watch YouTube videos as much. So sign up for our Discord. We got a link down in the description. It's free. Uh, we have paid tiers where there's uh, you can unlock uh, new experiences with the investing bros, but there is a free Discord. You're going to love it. Everybody who comes in there stays and uh, continues to engage, so we love it. Let us know in chat. If you're a member of the Discord, give us a hoot, give us a holler, and let us know. Uh, but that is going to be our main promo today is, is just go ahead and check out uh, the free Discord and check out that newsletter that dropped yesterday. Piper, what is something that you wanted to bring the attention to of YouTube this morning? Uh, for as far as promos go, uh, TA talks, man. Uh, we do TA talks on Wednesdays over in the chart prime discord. Uh, it's T shroom and I, and tomorrow, uh, it is for premier, uh, premium members of chart prime indicators and for investing bros, uh, members that have IV VIP role over in the chart prime discord automatically for their, uh, Patreon membership with the investing bros. So tomorrow, uh, you can get into that, uh, that stage room and we are going to be doing TA talks at 1 PM Eastern standard time. And we have a guest tomorrow. T shroom. We have a guest. That's right. It's bill noble. Bill Noble's right. going to come in and break down a little more than what he was able to get out yesterday on the show. And we're going to talk about, is there possibly, uh, trillions of dollars in china getting ready to flow into bitcoin and ethereum there are some key things taking place on june 1st guys you don't want to miss that there is a trifecta of news that say bitcoin and ethereum could be poised to make an astronomical move uh come june 1st so we're going to lay that out talk about that with each other and bill noble get his input on it that's all tomorrow 1 p.m eastern standard time chart prime discord so you have time if you're not a member of chart prime or a member of uh the patreon and both of those links are down below in the description so you can get in there and get some exclusive content absolutely totally and today obviously we have the bro talks uh bro time excuse me in uh there's no in, time like bro time <laughs> there's no time like bro time in uh, the discord there that is a paid uh version you've got to be uh, you've got to be in the paid versions of either gold or diamond to be able to access that. Uh, so that is going to be a lot of fun though, guys. We always have a ton of fun and we may even get into some of those theories that we were just talking about today. Uh, Tim is going to try to join that at three o'clock, but like he said, he's got uh, a lot of training and by three o'clock, I mean, three o'clock Eastern standard time. Uh, sorry, I need to check my Eastern standard privilege. Uh, but uh, yeah, so... <laughs> 
That'll be at three o'clock on the Investing Bros Discord. All right, guys. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on into some of the uh, new stories from today. We're going to start off with the banking crisis here, guys, as it has kind of reached a moment of resolve. J.P. Morgan Chase to buy most first most of First Republic assets after the bank has failed. Uh, some details on this under the deal, the FDIC will cover eighty percent. Oh, da, 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 80% of any losses incurred on First Republic's portfolio of single family residential mortgages, loans, and commercial loans over the next five to seven years. JP Morgan Chase will also uh, not assume First Republic's corporate debt, and it will receive $50 billion in financing from the FDIC to complete this deal. So they get a free $50 billion loan. Uh, prom assuming it's a very low interest rate on that loan. So they said, hey, here go, guys. Thanks for helping us out. Here's 50 big ones. But, but it's all not sunny skies and rainbows, says by, uh, Bob Michael uh, over at Bloomberg in an interview. Uh, he said that it would be naive to think that the banking crisis was over. Uh, he said, and I think it's somewhat naive to say that this is also just limited to First Republic. Uh, he thinks that we are in a crisis. Uh, he said, I think that regional banks are heavily dependent on FDIC. We don't know how they're going to operate uh, when these two programs expire. The other program of which he's referring is Federal Home Loan Bank. Uh, so he's got a pretty good bird's eye view there over at Bloomberg, Bob Michael. Um, and he's saying that just because we have reached a moment of resolve with big JP Morgan coming over here with the big bank, with the big money bags, and uh, absorbing up First Republic, it does not mean that this crisis is over. Uh, there is still a lot of commercial uh, real estate that is going downhill. And there's a lot of large banks, including the regional banks, that are exposed to that corporate real estate narrative. And that is a narrative that I'm hearing all over. I'm hearing it in the All In podcast. I'm hearing it just on general news like CNN and CNBC. Um, that corporate real estate story is not going anywhere. So make sure you're staying staying tuned because that that is going to continue to impact the regional bank story. Uh, Piper, we can take a second here. We got we got a, a lot more stories to get into. But did you have any thoughts here on the resolution of where uh, First Republic Bank is is uh, kind of going here? So uh, my biggest concern is. I think they're right. I think there is going to be a lessening of available funds from the FDIC. And that big concern comes from we're, we're at a June 1st cutoff on a debt selling increase. So uh, is, are they even going to allocate any funds to be available for more regional banks to start failing? Um, plus, you know, I mean, JP Morgan at the end of the day, JP Morgan didn't hunt down buying up uh, first Republic. They got, approached by the fdic so uh is the fdic playing you know favorites here uh with a whole lot of whole lot of favoritism going to the big players in in the market i i hate to see what kind of policy comes out of this later like hey are you willing to uh take this low rate uh 50 billion dollar loan here and uh also take on this bank and try to fix all of this and uh we'll figure out later on on uh what what we'll do with that uh, i do want to point out though that we had a super chat yeah yeah yep. i was going to do a quick quick uh hard pivot on that because i've got some quick answers for it elliot Locke oh. donated five dollars and said um with someone like me living paycheck to paycheck to get into gold would you buy silver until you had enough to buy one ounce of gold not financial advice so no i think silver right now as we're seeing there's some pretty spooky stuff going on in the charts I think that uh, whales are moving out of silver, and here's why. If we're going into a recession in the second half of this year, silver is an industrial metal, and an in, in industry is going to see a decline, a contraction during the recession. And so gold is not an industrial metal. Uh, don't get them confused. Silver has applications and is, and is demanded higher uh, than uh, what it would be if it was not an industrial metal. And that demand is going to be eroded as we move into a recession because there's just generally less economic activity, less demand for silver. So if you're looking to get into precious metals, get into gold. And just, and you don't, and if, it, Elliot, it looks like you're wanting to buy physical gold. So that is going to be an interesting move. But uh, there's, there's a lot of commentators that are just saying, go ahead and buy the gold miners, um, meaning buy the stock in the gold miners. So 
do your own research on that. That's going to be enough of an answer on that. But silver is not the buy moving into recession. Gold absolutely is. It has proven time and time again that in a recession, gold is is where you want to be diversified into. Um, and then Mike Lowry asked, tell us why you are in the pot stocks. So I will briefly do that as we transition into our next story here, uh, the pot stocks, because it's going to be legalized at some point. Um, and that's that's pretty much the end of it. And I also was way too into cannabis at one point. So (laughs) I do regret actually buying cannabis, obviously, because I am down quite a bit on those, on those names that I bought Tilray, MJ. uh, But I have faith in in cannabis to become descheduled in the United States. And the majority of the companies that I own are actually Canadian companies, um, that it's actually not even sure if they're going to have enough um, exposure to the American market, if they're not, if they're going to be able to compete with American cannabis producers and distributors uh, to be able to be profitable. Uh, They may be kind of cast to the wayside. So it's an interesting narrative. I don't think it's popular enough. I don't think it's in trend enough to cover too much more on this channel. Um, But I would say now is not the worst time to buy cannabis. When I bought it was (laughs) because it was really high. Uh, But now you may want to consider diversifying into it, especially if you think Biden is going to use that as a campaign piece to get reelected. All right, going over into my screen here, um, I wanted to give a big disclaimer, which is this. In 2022, the IMF reported that the U.S. dollar is 58.3% of global currency reserves. Okay, so that's where we're starting out, right? Now, that number, I will point out, since 2013, uh, and since this has been recorded in 2000, this goes back quite a ways, uh, 1995, that was actually about the same level, but this peaked at around 66% in 2005. So everybody loved the US back in 2005. Um, but now that has that has been coming down. But guys, look, uh, what I'm about, to, and why am I doing this? Because I'm about to bre- a read a brick de-dollarization story. You've been seeing them all over the place. And I think that people are too bought into this narrative. Um, I do think that there is, you're seeing a weakness, a weakening of the US dollar, but it has a long way to fall. This is really what I'm trying to point out, right? So, and and then if you look at the next seven here, the the Chinese renminbi is down, it's 3%, right? So this is the one that folks are thinking is going to flip the US dollar. This is, it it could, right? And and certainly forces are moving currently in that direction. Yes, that is true. But this number is three and this number is 59. 58. So that is that is really what you want to be paying attention to and just taking it. This is the grain of salt. All right. So let's go ahead and get into that BRIC story. Negotiations on new BRIC currency underway as nations pull to abandon the U.S. dollar. That title got you feeling some kind of way. I'm sure a top Russian lawmaker says world leaders have officially started working on an agreement to create a new global currency that does not utilize the United States dollar. So it's gone from rumor to print. Uh, And they're making it official, Facebook official, baby. At a conference organized by Russia's parliamentary newspaper, Azkov said negotiations detailing how the new currency will work are now underway and an agreement may be hammered out by the end of the year. So that is uh, pretty soon. Uh, A total of 19 additional countries are interested in joining the group, according to a South African BRIC ambassador. So definitely continuing a continuation in this narrative of the BRICS new currency, you know, rising and potentially uh, toppling the US dollar. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. The future is very uncertain. Who knows what's going to happen? But I come back to this guys here. It's a long way to fall. And this is just this is just one statistic. This is not our military spending based on other countries. This is not our bond holding. That is just the currencies, not even the bonds. Uh, so I just want to say things are moving in a negative direction for the U S dollar, but I don't buy this narrative hook, line and sinker. I think it's propaganda ultimately coming from the CCP, but Piper, what is your view on this? Is the dollar going to flush tomorrow and should we all be flooding into gold and Bitcoin as soon as we can? I've, uh, I I've told you my piece on this. I mean, I think that it's, it's 90% FUD, 10% reality. Um, yeah, of course they're going to try. Everyone's, everyone's been trying to take down their capital, you know, major economic counterpart or, uh, nemesis, 
uh, Nimisai, uh, for, you know, forever. Right. I mean, that's what, that's what, how, that's how it works. And right now China and Russia are trying to get to the point where they can, uh, you know, flip the U S dollars as the reserve currency. Why not? You know, that's, that's what they should be trying to do. However, comma pause for effect. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, China's manipulation of their currency valuation. Let's talk about the historical uh, valuation of currencies in any type of socialist and communist, uh, true socialist, not democratic socialist, uh, socialist and communist environment. They manipulate their funds massively. No one is going to, in their right mind, say, I'm going to put all of my eggs in the basket of highly manipulated currency valuations. Not going to happen. You guys think the U.S. dollar is bad on, on manipulation of value? You have seen nothing in comparison to what it's like out there in other places in the world. I'm telling you. I've been all over the world. I, I have seen people beg for the U.S. dollar instead of their own currency, to include in Germany during their uh, economic event that they were having in uh, 2022. Uh, in Germany, soldiers were being begged, please do not give me the Deutsch, I w the Euro, please give me uh, your your U.S. dollar. They That's all they wanted. So um, I, I think that whole fear thing would be another 50, 60, 70 years out from now. Uh, and the numbers speak for themselves. We are so far above any other currency out there. And that's why. So mm -hmm. 50, 60, you know, that's a, that's a, per, I would say that's a conservative estimate. I think that I, I'm actually less conservative on that. I think it would probably be like more like 20, 30 years. You're seeing this number uh, closer to 20%, closer to where the Euro is now. Uh, and this number, the Chinese renminbi or their E CBDC, right? Their E renminbi, E you know, E yuan, closer to like 10, 15 percent, right? But that does that. That's and then they're neck and neck, right? 20 to 15 percent. Um, but then you know you still have all of the rest of these. I wanted to point out are, these are all American allies. There's not a single name on here other than China, right? That is not you know that is part of the BRICS, <laughs> right? So right. that's something to consider. This is all basically American interest here, uh, minus the Chinese renminbi, which accounts for 3%, a, a meager amount of this overall. All right. Well, we have beat that story to death. Hopefully you guys are uh, not living in fear. That's the point of this. Don't live in fear that your US dollar is going to become worthless in your lifetime. It will become very clear if you need to sell your dollars. All right. Debt ceiling uh, dysfunction could trigger global financial crisis, warns Hillary Clinton. Uh, she's a super well-respected, very intelligent woman. Um, and how could we possibly question anything that she ever says? So there you go. Um, this is just a fun little way to hit on something I don't really care about is just the debt ceiling. Um, every single year they get into this, they make it a big political issue. The media gets to sell a bunch of ads on the fury and the fear, and I ignore it. If, if they decided to not pass a debt ceiling, uh, if they decided to not, um, you know, pass a, a higher debt ceiling, then that would be catastrophic. Obviously, that would not be good, but it, it seems to be just kind of a political circus when it when it comes around. So we'll just skip whistle right on past that graveyard. Unless Piper, you wanted to mention something about the debt ceiling or Hillary Clinton, you're muted. Mm -hmm. that right there there we go um yes but it did trigger a one month uh treasury bond boom this morning like the one month treasury That's bond right. jumped up big time uh so you know some people trying to make some money real quick on this uh thing that have, uh, that uh, this event that occurs every single year um but I'm not overly concerned about it. I mean, hey, you know, debt ceiling has got to be raised. We know this. They all know this. I, I got news for you guys. All of the Democrats and Republicans in D.C. all know that they have to continue raising this because the opposite, the, the result of not increasing the debt ceiling is we don't get to pay our minimal interest, which then gives us a lowering in our credit rating, which then affects the entire global economy never not going to be raised. The only way that we're going to get to a point where we don't need to raise the, the debt ceiling is to literally stop spending so much money so that we don't have a higher debt ceiling and we have money to pay in the interest uh, towards interest um, with funds that are not going to, you know, seeing if why frogs in, in California are going, you know, changing their breeding cycle, whatever.
Uh, yeah, it's going to keep happening, but there was a little bit of uh, money to be made this morning off of the one month treasury bond. So, Hey, yeah. I just call it how it is, man. I am, I am abrupt and blunt. So <laughs> love it. Love it. We just want you guys to not be living in fear. You know, that's not what God wants for you. And we don't want that for you either. You know, don't be getting swept up in either of these narratives of the de-dollarization or the, uh, the, the debt ceiling narratives, you know, they will come to pass. And if you're not ready, then you're not ready. Right. But don't, but, uh, so take proper precaution, but don't live in fear. Moving along guys, we're going to end off on some really strong bullish stories here. Micro strategies, Bitcoin, uh, conviction strong as it posts Q1 profit. Let's get into some of these details. In addition to the tax benefit, the firm cashed in 121.9 million in revenue, uh, in one quarter, up 2.2% from the same time last year. That's their quarterly, not annual number. Uh, Fong Lee, the firm's CEO, explained in the May 1st statement that MicroStrategy's conviction in its Bitcoin investment strategy is as strong as ever. Uh, we remain disciplined on cost while in investing in growth, and we will continue to execute our dual strategy of growth in our business intelligence software and acquiring Bitcoin for the future, he added. So, and then there's Michael Saylor. He's got a really cool tweet here that kind of shows a graph of MicroStrategy outperformance since adoption of Bitcoin. Uh, so as you can see there, seeing some really, really good results. While it is up 166% on this metric, you know, most of the, uh, most of its competitors, you could say, at least to this New York Stock Exchange, are not anywhere near that and bitcoin even is is lower so that's kind of curious all right moving along into our last and final and most potentially most bullish story of the year for bitcoin is that jim kramer says bitcoin will shrivel up and die very soon this was published april 30th but it just came to us today look at him there he is the bearer of reverse news so piper maybe we'll get back into brocam and just kind of chat a little bit about what this has meant why i'm bringing this up uh and what it means to you what do you think about this story here that means it's time to buy bitcoin man the kramer inverse is active and, and, and alive and well so That's right. um yeah it's uh <laughs> The man speaks, things move the opposite direction. Just, you know, be ahead of, catch the wave, catch the wave. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the truth of it. And as we're wrapping up here, guys, uh, Jim Cramer, you know, the meme is that he, when he calls things, the reverse happens. And that's why he's such a good analyst because he's extremely reliable. You just have to make sure you're, you're looking through the filter of reversion. Uh, whenever you're hearing him speak. So that's going to be it, guys. We've had a lot of big fireworks in the market and soon to come to uh, tomorrow, we get those big FOMC numbers. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see kind of what they what they uh, go ahead and decide. But guys, I'm looking at the like to follow ratio and I want to say, let's get those likes up right before we end the stream. Go ahead and, and smash the like button. We're at 137 viewing and 93 liking. So I think we can get those numbers up, baby. Let's do it for Bitcoin. Am I buying the dip? You absolutely are sure I am buying this dip here, guys. I think it could go a little bit lower. Tim went into some of those levels, but if it goes lower, I'm just going to buy more. So that's how I see that on Bitcoin side. And I'm sure Piper has a similar sentiment over on the ETH side as well. All right. Well, I, of course, I, crypto in general, man, I have a lot of ETH, but don't, don't forget my ETH is because ETH tends to do more uh, on the run up than what Bitcoin does typically, um, and so I, I'm just buying ETH so I can get the bigger gain, so I can flip it into Bitcoin. So I want Bitcoin to go up too. Don't don't get it twisted, man. Don't get it twisted. Like a little 420 reference there for you, T Shroom. So um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm all about the Bitcoin at the end of the day. It's just all these other things they tend to make money quicker. So I'm gonna make all that extra money to throw into Bitcoin. You know, it's like you know, right. who want, who wants free Bitcoin? I do. Let me shave a little bit of free Bitcoin onto this trade here. So that's, that's right. what that's all I'm doing. <laughs> absolutely absolutely piper well thank you guys so much for watching and uh, engaging with us this morning to stay up to date on what's going on in the news with bitcoin and ethereum and all of your favorite alts i have been uh, taylor shrum in here t shroom uh, on the channel and joined by piper and and uh tim earlier on uh, we will see you guys in bro time a little bit later today at 3 p.m eastern standard time on our in our discord 
go ahead and check out those Discord links as Do you're that. heading out. <laughs> but uh, you are watching and listening to the most generous investment community online. See you tomorrow. And we have the best outro in the business. Check this one out. Paper, turn that better to cake. Money like Lego, connect the dots that bank. We are investing bros. We are investing bros. Investing bros. Army pipe, lethal on trade. Entries and exits, worthy of praise. Tim, the professor of the TA. Shout it out loud on the PA. Teach rooms news, catch a word. Doing better than what he deserves. Beamer, leave no evidence. Soon fly coop with his dividend. Huh? Trying to make paper. Turn that better to cake. Money like Lego. Connect the dots that bank. We are investing bros. We are investing bros. Investing bros.